Right. So in simple terms, what would you say is a chamber of commerce? Okay, so a chamber of commerce is like a network. It's an organization where you have various business people, various like-minded individuals from the business sector. When you talk about the business sector, it traverses oil and gas, manufacturing, uh, agriculture, mining, to name a few of them. So all of these people come together and they form a network. When they form a network, the structure that binds that network is a chamber of commerce. So we are not a government entity. We are more or less uh, not for profit. We are not a government entity. All we do is advocate for the right policies to the government. We're like a voice. I mean, if you want to create a change, sometimes it's very difficult when you're speaking alone. You need an organization that is reputable, an organization with reputable people, so to speak, an organization with a structure to push the change that you want to see while you are also in the middle, you know, in the face of these changes. So the Chamber of Commerce is more like that, that structure that pushes, that advocates for the change that people want to see in businesses, especially from the policy side, from the government. So I would also like to say that the Chamber of Commerce is like a one-stop shop, your, your, foremost, your foremost platform for identification when you're going into business in any country or any city or region. So instead of dealing with the bottlenecks and the hurdles that involve with starting a business, running a business, sometimes you want to go to the Chamber of Commerce for due diligence, for advice, because that is basically what they are structured and programmed to do. So in simple terms, as summarized, the Chamber of Commerce is like a network of various individuals, various businesses, various institutions that are geared towards moving businesses and economy forward for multinational organizations, large-scale um, large scale enterprises, SMEs, and small and medium enterprises to name a few. Thank you. All right. Interesting. So are there any criteria for any business to be a part of a chamber of commerce? In this case, the America, the Nigeria America Chamber of Commerce. Okay, definitely. Uh, like every organization or every institution, institutions, there are criteria for you to become a member. There are criteria for you to be a part of any organization. So the Chamber of Commerce is not different. Now, it varies. So the US Chamber of Commerce has their criteria for membership quite different from the British Chamber of Commerce. I worked with an organization that was an affiliate of the British Chamber of Commerce. So our criteria was quite different, specific to the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. If you want to become or you, you aspire to become a member of the chamber, you should measure up certain criteria and requirements. One of them is, okay, so I'll, I'll put it in very simple terms so everybody understands. The categories are segmented into three. So your business has to be in one category. You cannot join the chamber as an individual. You have to be a business. You have to be a business. You can't join the organization as, you know, a single entity, as, as an individual. So now we categorize the businesses into three. So number one is like a premium category. Premium category are for multinationals. So when you talk about multinationals, we're looking at the likes of Chevron, the likes of Shell, uh, what's it called? Multi-choice, Microsoft, Google, to name a few of them. These are multinational organizations whose earnings are way above one billion. So when I say uh -huh. one billion, I'm talking about one billion in my currency. That's now. That's then unicorns, right? Second category. Second category. Say it but, again. Are you talking about unicorns? Like businesses that are worth Sorry. a billion, a billion dollars are referred to as unicorns. So are you talking about unicorns? Meaning the profit you make. Okay. Yes, the profit you make at the end of every year has to be over a billion, a billion naira, a billion oh, okay. naira. Okay. So we're looking at things like Google, Microsoft, uh, multi choice, like I mentioned, and then we have the category B members whose turnover are below one billion naira. So if you're looking at one below one billion naira, you're looking at below one billion naira to five hundred million naira. So you have category B members like EcoBank, a lot of banks across the country are members of the chamber. Then you have category C for SMEs. Category C for SMEs are organizations whose earnings are below 500 million naira every year. So these are category C members. You can be a if you have an organization that is duly registered with Corporate Affairs Commission, you've measured up with all the requirements for registration, and you're sure that you've earned between XYZ amounts of money to 500 million naira, you can be a category C member. So these are just some of the criteria. And then maybe many other criteria. How many, how, what's the number of people you have working with your organization? Have you gone through the due process of registration? Do you have the certificate of incorporation, all of this? And then somebody from the chamber does due diligence on your organization. So you've submitted all your documents. You'd like to be a member of the chamber. The chamber appoints its membership officer to carry out due diligence on your organization. So we visit your organization, get to interface with your staff, actually take a, um, a detailed look at your earnings to be sure that everything you said corresponds with the documents and that's it the, the process is not just as complicated as people anticipate or imagine okay so i'm curious for a business to be a part of the chamber of commerce 
does that business have to cater to both the American market and the Nigerian market? Okay, thank you very much. So primarily, we are the Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce. We two things. So we are interested in strengthening the relationship, economic relationship between Nigeria and the United States. So for investors, businessmen who are seeking to work with the U.S., Nigerian American Chamber of Commerce is your one-stop shop. So this is like this should be like your first port of call for due diligence information. And then uh, businesses, people who are seeking to work with Nigeria from the U.S., same thing. Our Chamber of Commerce stands as an interface. And like I mentioned, we are the foremost. We are the oldest in West Africa. We were established in 1960. So we are way above 50 years. You know, the credibility is there. Now, your direct question is, I hope I didn't miss the question. Yeah, I, I said, question, yeah, given that the Chamber of Commerce is named Nigeria America Chamber of Commerce. So I'm, I'm curious, do businesses that are registered to the Chamber of Commerce, do they have to cater to both the American market and the Nigerian market? Fantastic. Thank you very much. That's a very brilliant question. Like I just mentioned, we are an interface between Nigeria and US for trade business. Now, the first part of call is the, 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 the primary thing we consider is, are you interested in banking? Are you interested in doing business with the US? Are you interested in investing in the US? Are you interested in buying from the US, exporting to the US, importing from the US? Now, if the US is your market, we are your best friends and we are your best niche. That's um, point of sales number one. Then the second one, number two is, for Nigerian businesses, because remember there's a Nigeria and there's an American. It's not just yeah. businesses who are interested in going to the US, or people who are interested in establishing or strengthening their relationships with in the US. Businesses in Nigeria will always seek to grow by way of getting more information about what is required for their businesses. Your, there's a policy that has been put out by the government and you think you want a chamber to speak up for you, just like I'm speaking on this program right now. There's different categories of communication. You want a voice. You want to amplify your voice. And you're in Nigerian business, even though you're not stationed in the US. Yes, of course, the chamber welcomes you. So, like I mentioned, the first category primarily is for Nigeria America. And of course, the second one is for businesses in Nigeria, of course. But like I mentioned, Nigeria America is our primary purpose, our primary target. Okay. You did say that the Chamber of Commerce does help in fostering uh bilateral relations between countries. 